The second point, epistemic transparency. Descartes seems to be convinced that if we have a belief, then our reason for that belief should be clearly available to us, present in our mind. If I only believe something on the basis of custom or authority, then it's not transparent to me why I believe it. So we're going to see a lot of questions coming up about why someone should believe something in the sciences as well as in philosophy or theology or anything else on the basis of good reasons. That's going to feed back into the idea of intellectual autonomy, that you should have a kind of ownership or self-possession of your own body of knowledge. You should know what you believe, you should know why you believe it, and it should be judged according to standards that you yourself find to be compelling, not standards that you just receive off the shelf from some other person or institution. The third point here, these both combined to create mistrust of tradition. This is going to feed into also this uh, sense that Descartes is going to reject all philosophical reasons prior to himself and look only inside of himself through reflection and out of the world of common experience and common sense to come up with something totally new. But what other assumptions is Descartes making about the nature of philosophy? What is he assuming about the nature of method, for example? Okay, so we see that this is part, and partly a critique of tradition. So people say, we've been doing philosophy this way for a hundred years, and you should be the person who carries it into the next generation. That doesn't look like a project that Descartes is going to want to be part of. Instead, we see, he talks about the title, the method for correctly conducting one's reason. What's the first thing he's assuming? There's not many methods. So if you remember Aristotle, Aristotle says, when you're engaging in any branch of study, you should use the method that is best suited to the subject matter. But when studying ethics, you don't study ethics in the same way that you study mathematics. It says this explicitly near the beginning of the Nicolaitan Ethics, which we read last year. So we don't expect the same degree of certainty as Aristotle in ethics or political science that we would expect in mathematics. We don't study history or languages or literature in the same way that we would study philosophy. We would use the method best suited the subject matter, meaning for Aristotle, there are many different methods for acquiring truth. And they have to be matched up with the subject matter they're best suited to. Descartes talks about the method, one single method. The reason there's one method for Descartes is because there's just one human mind doing the knowing. You should use the method that is best suited to the human mind. And then we apply that to all subjects. You see the difference. Aristotle says there are many subjects out there, many objects of study. Each one of them may require different methods. We should use diverse methods according to what reality requires. Descartes says, wait a minute. No matter what I'm studying, what's always there in every study that I do? I study history, I study mathematics, I study philosophy, I study theology, I study literature. What's the common element? It's, it's I. I'm the one doing the study with my human mind. And so if there is, I think this turn towards reflection, if I reflect upon the human mind and discover there's one method that is the, perhaps the only method best suited to acquiring the truth in the sciences, then that's the method I should use regardless of the subject matter. So the question here is whether, as we would agree with Aristotle and think that the method for acquiring truth should be subject dependent. There's assumptions built in there about the nature of the self. Or whether we think with Descartes that the, that this, the method for acquiring truth is independent of the subject matter and depends solely upon the nature of the human mind, which is doing the knowing. 